space can be a daunting subject to contemplate. The potential risks concealed within the immense universe can indeed be frightening. It would be huge, huge or, or right. some other thing, and you'd right. see you'd it. You'd see it, right. you see a glowing thing. Gotcha. This is dark, and it has huge mass, and it's small. Mm. That's three smoking guns right there. Among all aspects of space exploration, one particular phenomenon has consistently fascinated and struck fear simultaneously, black holes. These immensely powerful entities have been the focus of extensive research worldwide. Scientists have tirelessly strived to unravel the mysteries surrounding black holes and their contents. However, a significant development has emerged recently, courtesy of Neil deGrasse Tyson. We finally see what's inside a black hole, and well, all of it might just blow your mind. So join us as we explore what's inside a black hole according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. A black hole is an extraordinary celestial phenomenon found in space, formed as a result of a massive explosion. These black holes possess an astonishingly concentrated mass within a remarkably tiny area, generating a gravitational force of such magnitude that even light cannot break free from its grip. Once an object crosses the event horizon of a black hole, it becomes trapped indefinitely. These enigmatic forces of nature come in various sizes, including stellar black holes which may have a mass just a few times that of our Sun, and supermassive black holes residing at the cores of galaxies, which can be millions or even billions of times more massive than our Sun. Scientists have been studying the effects of black holes indirectly for many decades, and with each piece of data gathered, we unveil numerous secrets. Now even though black holes appear overwhelmingly massive and potent, they do have an origin story. They aren't simply randomly scattered in space, they are born through a specific process. Black holes originate from the remnants of massive stars that have consumed all their nuclear fuel. These stars undergo a dramatic event known as a supernova, which marks the conclusion of their life cycles. During a supernova, the outer layers of the star are explosively ejected into space, while the core experiences a gravitational collapse. However, not all collapses are identical. If the core's mass is significantly greater than that of our Sun, the force of gravity becomes dominant, causing the core to implode. This implosion is so intense that it compresses the mass into an exceptionally small volume resulting in an object with a gravitational field so overpowering that nothing can escape its clutches, thus giving rise to a black hole. The size of a black hole is determined by its mass. The most well-known type of black holes, called stellar black holes, can range in mass from just a few times to several tens of times that of our Sun. At the heart of a black hole lies the singularity, a region characterized by infinite density and extreme space-time curvature. According to our current understanding of physics, the laws of nature break down at this point, and our conventional theories struggle to fully explain what occurs within the singularity. To gain a true grasp of singularities, we need to explore unconventional ideas. In the field of physics, a singularity refers to a point in space-time where certain quantities become either infinitely large or undefined. These singularities appear in various theoretical contexts, such as the inception of the expanding universe, commonly referred to as the Big Bang Singularity, and within the interiors of black holes. When we delve into the study of the Big Bang Singularity, a fundamental challenge arises. According to the theory, the universe originated from an exceedingly hot and dense state approximately 13.8 billion years ago. However, as we rewind time toward this initial state, the equations of general relativity, which govern the behavior of gravity, break down. This breakdown implies that our current understanding of physics falls short in describing the conditions at the moment of the Big Bang. To resolve this issue, we require a theory that harmonizes general relativity with the principles of quantum mechanics. You see, black holes, too, harbor singularities at their cores, regions where gravitational forces become infinitely strong, and space-time curves dramatically as well. According to general relativity, matter and energy that enter a black hole ultimately reach its singularity and are compressed infinitely. This concept stretches the limits of our physics comprehension, intensifying the challenge. The quest to tackle these enigmatic singularities has motivated scientists to pursue a theory of quantum gravity, 
aiming to unite the principles of general relativity and quantum mechanics once and for all. Now, this provides us with some clarity. Quantum gravity seeks to provide a framework that accounts for the behavior of space-time on both cosmic and subatomic scales. Such a theory could offer valuable insights into the nature of singularities and the fundamental workings of the universe. One approach to addressing the singularity issue is the theory of loop quantum gravity. This theory poses that at incredibly small scales, space-time is quantized, meaning it's composed of discrete, indivisible units. These fundamental units are often termed loops or spin networks. In loop quantum gravity, the concept of quantization is applied to space-time itself, considering space-time not as a continuous and infinitely divisible entity, but as a collection of discrete elements. These interconnected loops or networks represent the underlying structure of the fabric of the universe. Within the framework of loop quantum gravity, singularities associated with black holes and the Big Bang could potentially be resolved. One key insight from this theory is that at these tiny scales, the discrete nature of space-time prevents the formation of infinite densities and curvatures that give rise to singularities in classical general relativity. For instance, in the context of black holes, loop quantum gravity suggests that as matter collapses toward the core, space-time becomes increasingly small. This prevents matter from reaching an infinitely dense singularity. Instead, the collapsing matter encounters a quantum bounce near the core, where it rebounds and begins to expand once more. This scenario leads to the creation of a new region inside the black hole, often called a quantum black hole or bounce region. The bounce region replaces the classical singularity, offering a potential resolution to the singularity problem. Similarly, regarding the Big Bang singularity, loop quantum gravity suggests that the universe's initial state did not involve an infinitely dense and singular point. Instead, the universe emerged from a pre-existing quantum gravitational phase, where space-time's nature prevented the occurrence of a singularity. This provides a fresh perspective on the universe's origin and evolution, sidestepping the singularities present in classical models. The quest for a unifying theory is driven by the ambition to reconcile the classical treatment of singularities in physics with the principles of quantum physics. Bridging this gap holds the promise of new insights and potential resolutions to the challenges posed by singularities. Nonetheless, the vast variety of black holes presents a complex challenge that even proposed solutions struggle to explain. In the extreme vastness of the universe, scientists have observed a number of black holes. Though similarly terrifying, they are different in their properties. Let's take a look into the types of these black holes for better insight. Stellar black holes are the most commonly observed type of black hole in the universe. And as mentioned earlier in this video, they form as a result of the gravitational collapse of massive stars at the end of their life cycles. Here's how it happens. When a massive star exhausts all its nuclear fuel, the outward pressure generated by nuclear reactions can no longer counteract the gravitational force pulling inward. Gravity becomes the dominant force, causing the star to collapse under its own immense weight. This collapse leads to the creation of a stellar black hole. As the star collapses, it becomes incredibly compact, cramming a significant amount of mass into an extraordinarily small volume. Consequently, Stellar black holes typically possess a mass ranging from just a few times to around 20 times that of our sun. What's truly remarkable about stellar black holes is their minuscule size, despite their considerable mass. Their diameter measures only a few kilometers, highlighting their extreme density. This tremendous density gives rise to the formation of an event horizon, which is a boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape. This event horizon serves as the point of no return, where the gravitational pull of the black hole becomes so overpowering that any object or information crossing it becomes forever trapped within the black hole's grasp. Next, let's explore intermediate mass black holes. Although the precise mass range for these black holes is an area of ongoing scientific investigation and refinement, they are generally believed to have masses ranging from thousands to tens of thousands of times that of our sun. This places them in a much denser category compared to stellar black holes. The mechanisms responsible for the formation of intermediate mass black holes are not yet fully understood, but two primary scenarios are currently under investigation. The first possibility is that they come into being through the merging of multiple stellar mass black holes. 
In regions of space characterized by a high concentration of massive stars like globular clusters or galactic nuclei, interactions between stars can lead to the formation of binary systems. Over time, these binary systems can merge due to gravitational interactions, eventually resulting in the creation of an intermediate mass black hole. The second formation scenario suggests that intermediate mass black holes form through the direct collapse of massive gas clouds in the early universe. These gas clouds, which are dense aggregations of primordial matter, can experience rapid gravitational collapse, leading to the formation of an intermediate mass black hole instead of a star. This process may have been more prevalent in the early stages of galaxy formation when gas concentrations were higher, which explains why stellar black holes are more common in the present era. Detecting intermediate mass black holes is an exceptionally challenging task due to their mysterious nature and limited numbers. However, their presence has been indirectly detected through various means, such as the study of the dynamics of stars and gas in the vicinity of these potential black holes. Moreover, recent observations have provided some evidence for the existence of intermediate mass black holes in galactic nuclei as well. This suggests that they may not be as rare as previously believed. Following in size, up next are the supermassive black holes, the giants among the black hole family which boast masses that range from millions to billions of times that of our Sun. These colossal entities occupy the central regions of most galaxies, including our own Milky Way. They wield immense gravitational influence over their galactic surroundings and profoundly shape the evolution of galaxies. The formation of supermassive black holes is an ongoing area of research and still lacks a complete understanding. Nonetheless, numerous theories have been put forth to elucidate their origins. One prominent hypothesis suggests that supermassive black holes develop from smaller black holes through a process known as accretion. According to this concept, as various forms of matter like gas, dust, and stars accumulate around a black hole, they form a swirling disk known as an accretion disk. The black hole's colossal gravitational pull draws material from this disk, causing it to spiral inward and ultimately merge with the black hole. Over vast stretches of time, this continuous influx of matter allows the black hole to expand into a supermassive scale. Throughout the accretion process, enormous amounts of gravitational potential energy are released as matter falls into the black hole. This liberated energy fuels some of the brightest and most potent phenomena in the universe. Away from the conventional black holes are charged black holes, which present a captivating variation within the realm of black holes. Distinguished by the presence of electric charge, there are two primary types of charged black holes, Reissner-Nordstrom black holes and Kerr-Newman black holes. Each type exhibits distinct properties, which arise from the interplay between the black hole's charge and other factors, notably its rotation. Reissner-Nordstrom black holes are charged but non-rotating. They are described by the Reissner-Nordstrom solution within the framework of general relativity. The charge of these black holes influences the behavior of their gravitational field. However, in terms of their overall structure, Reissner-Nordstrom black holes share similarities with uncharged black holes. They possess an event horizon, but the size of this event horizon for a Reissner-Nordstrom black hole is dependent upon both its mass and electric charge. In contrast, Kerr-Newman black holes are characterized by both charge and rotation. They are described by the Kerr-Newman solution in general relativity. The combination of electric charge and rotation introduces distinctive phenomena associated with these black holes. One notable effect is known as frame dragging, wherein the rotating black hole drags and twists the surrounding spacetime. Kerr-Newman black holes feature both an event horizon and an inner region called the Cauchy horizon. This inner boundary within the black hole distinguishes the exterior region from the region housing the singularity. The properties of the Cauchy horizon are influenced by the black hole's charge and rotation, contributing to the intricate dynamics near the center of the black hole. At the Cauchy horizon, the effects of the black hole's charge and rotation become particularly significant. The Cauchy horizon is tied to a concept called the Cosmic Censorship Hypothesis, which is a conjecture within general relativity. This hypothesis proposes that singularities within black holes are always concealed behind event horizons, ensuring that any potential effects they might have on the external universe remain hidden. The behavior of the Cauchy horizon is closely linked to the validity of this hypothesis. If the Cosmic Censorship Hypothesis holds true, 
the Kachi horizon would remain obscured within the black hole, and its intricate dynamics would not be observable from the external perspective. Emphasizing its significance would be an understatement in this context. But there's another side to them as well. Unexplored and hypothetical black holes present interesting avenues for scientific exploration within the realm of astrophysics. While the types of black holes mentioned earlier are well known, there are still unexplored frontiers in black hole research. Ongoing scientific investigations also extend to the intriguing realm of primordial black holes. These are theoretical black holes that could have come into existence in the early universe, shortly after the occurrence of the Big Bang. Primordial black holes would have originated from regions featuring intense density fluctuations, and their formation processes would differ from those giving rise to stellar black holes. What sets them apart is their potential for a wide range of masses, including the existence of tiny black holes referred to as micro-black holes. This diversity sets them apart from the more familiar types of black holes we typically encounter. Additionally, a captivating avenue of exploration involves the study of rotating black holes with extreme angular momentum. These black holes, termed extremal black holes, are theoretical entities that spin at their maximum possible rates. They captivate scientists and researchers because they push the boundaries of our current comprehension of black hole physics, delving into the extremes of what these enigmatic objects can exhibit. But regardless of the type of black hole under discussion, the concept that inevitably accompanies it is that of dark matter. Dark matter is a unique form of matter that comprises a significant portion of the mass in the universe, far surpassing the quantity of ordinary matter that we can directly observe. It earns its name because it doesn't interact with light or other forms of electromagnetic radiation, rendering it challenging to detect and study. Instead, its presence is detected from the gravitational effects it exerts on visible matter and the overall large-scale structure of the cosmos. While the precise nature of dark matter remains a mystery, several theories suggest that it played a pivotal role in the formation and evolution of galaxies, including the creation of black holes. One compelling theory proposes that dark matter serves as the scaffolding upon which galaxies assemble. Its gravitational pull aids in the aggregation of ordinary matter, like gas and dust, leading to the formation of massive structures like galaxies. As these structures evolve, they can eventually create the conditions necessary for the birth of black holes. Dark matter, through its gravitational influence, fundamentally shapes the distribution of matter in the universe fostering the right circumstances for the emergence of black holes. Another intriguing possibility is that dark matter itself may consist of primordial black holes. If dark matter indeed comprises these primordial black holes, their gravitational interactions could have shaped the dynamics of the early universe, potentially triggering the formation of more stars and galaxies in their vicinity. Nevertheless, it's important to note that while dark matter is widespread, it's unlikely to directly form black holes. Traditional black holes, as currently understood, are believed to originate from the gravitational collapse of normal matter, such as massive stars. In contrast, spinning and charged black holes appear to have possible connections to dark matter. The presence of spin or electric charge in black holes might prolong their lifetimes and allow them to persist for extended periods. This could potentially position them as a source or reservoir for dark matter particles, offering a potential to shed light on the nature of dark matter and its role in the formation and evolution of the universe. Much of our knowledge about black holes is derived from meticulously studying known black holes in as much detail as possible. Despite the challenges, we possess the necessary tools to achieve this. The Very Large Telescope, VLT, situated at the Paranal Observatory in Chile, is a formidable resource in this endeavor. It comprises four individual telescopes, each featuring a primary mirror with a diameter of 8.2 meters. The VLT is outfitted with advanced instruments like the spectrograph for integral field observations in the near-infrared and the multi-unit spectroscopic explorer. These instruments grant the capability to closely examine black holes across various wavelengths, offering high-resolution imaging and spectroscopic capabilities for the comprehensive study of black hole dynamics, composition, and behavior. In addition to the VLT, there's the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT, a global network of radio telescopes that synchronize observations to effectively create a virtual Earth-sized telescope. 
By combining signals from multiple telescopes worldwide, the EHT achieves an unprecedented level of resolution, enabling detailed images of black holes to be captured. The collaboration made history in 2019 by capturing the first direct image of a black hole's event horizon, specifically the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy, M87. This historic achievement provided visual proof of the existence of black holes and offered valuable insights into their structure and surroundings. Further enhancing our capabilities is the Gravity Instrument, an interferometric instrument installed at the VLT in Chile. It combines light received from four VLT telescopes, creating an interferometer with exceptional angular resolution. Gravity's primary objective is to study the immediate vicinity of black holes, including their accretion disks, jets, gravitational interactions with surrounding stars, and more. Complementing these instruments is the extremely large telescope, ELT, the world's largest optical and infrared telescope. Upon completion, with a primary mirror diameter of 39 meters, it will possess unparalleled light-gathering power. Equipped with advanced adaptive optics, the ELT will correct for atmospheric distortions, providing exceptionally clear images. This cutting-edge telescope will play a pivotal role in the detailed examination of black holes and various astronomical phenomena. With the ELT, astronomers can observe the dynamics of black hole accretion, the growth of supermassive black holes, and the intricate relationship between black holes and their host galaxies with unprecedented clarity. Additionally, astronomers employ the study of star orbits around black holes to detect the presence of dark matter. The gravitational influence of dark matter on the motion of stars within galaxies becomes evident when analyzing their orbits. If the observed stellar motion cannot be accounted for solely by visible matter, such as stars and gas clouds, it suggests the existence of additional mass attributed to dark matter. This approach offers a unique way to indirectly study dark matter and its role in shaping the dynamics of the cosmos. Dark matter constitutes a concealed and elusive form of matter that lacks interaction with light and other electromagnetic radiation. Detecting its existence solely relies on deducing its gravitational influence on nearby objects. When stars orbit around a central black hole, the gravitational force exerted by any potential dark matter influences their paths. However, this is where scientists must employ exhaustive research methods to make a tangible impact. One strategy involves studying binary systems in which a black hole engages in a gravitational interplay with a companion star. By tracking the orbital motion of the companion star, astronomers can assess its rate of orbital decay. If this decay occurs more slowly than anticipated by established physical laws, it implies the presence of extra mass affecting the orbit, potentially attributed to dark matter. Certain binary systems have indeed exhibited this phenomenon, lending support to the notion that substantial quantities of dark matter surround black holes. Another approach involves examining the orbital periods of stars in proximity to black holes. Astronomers measure the time taken for a star to complete an orbit around a black hole and compare it to theoretical predictions. A significantly shorter observed orbital time than expected could suggest the influence of additional mass stemming from dark matter encircling the black hole. Furthermore, it is conceivable that dark matter could be highly concentrated in the vicinity of black holes. Astronomers investigate the behavior of stars near black holes to gauge the characteristics of dark matter. When you are unable to directly observe one of the primary components under scrutiny, you must rely on the effects it has on its surroundings. As interstellar matter crosses the event horizon, it becomes ensnared within the relentless gravitational pull of the black hole. The matter's escape is prevented by the overpowering gravitational force exerted by the black hole. As the matter spirals closer to the black hole, it forms an accretion disk due to the angular momentum, causing it to orbit the black hole before eventually being consumed. It remains trapped within the black hole's gravitational clutches as questions about the inner workings of black holes persist. Renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has shared his insights on the intriguing concepts of wormholes and black holes, exploring the possibility of these cosmic phenomena serving as gateways to other universes. In a YouTube video from 2015, he delves into the physics behind these captivating ideas. Tyson describes wormholes as theoretical structures that could potentially link two distant points in space-time, essentially creating a shortcut or bridge between different parts of the universe. Although wormholes remain speculative and theoretical, 
they have captivated the imagination of both scientists and science fiction enthusiasts due to their potential for enabling faster-than-light travel and facilitating interstellar journeys. Back to black holes, Tyson discusses the notion of them potentially acting as portals to other universes. He explains that black holes are regions of space with incredibly strong gravitational forces. In certain theoretical models, black holes could serve as gateways or portals to other realms in the cosmos. According to these theories, the intense gravitational forces within black holes might create a pathway or connection to different parts of the universe. The discovery of a wormhole within a black hole would revolutionize our understanding of space. It would suggest the existence of a bridge connecting distant regions of the universe, challenging our conventional notions of space, and offering the potential for interstellar travel, access to other galaxies, or even different universes. The presence of a wormhole within black holes would add complexity to these already powerful cosmic objects. It would imply that black holes not only possess immense gravitational forces, but also the capability to sustain and facilitate a wormhole. This discovery could provide valuable insights into the fundamental physics governing black holes and the nature of space-time itself. Indeed, there's even more to the story. If the other end of a black hole's wormhole leads to another universe, it would support the concept of a multiverse, where numerous universes exist alongside our own. This idea has gained significant attention in popular culture in recent years. If such a scenario were to be confirmed, it would provide us with a deeper understanding of this intriguing concept. Exploring these connections could offer valuable insights into the properties and characteristics of parallel universes, potentially revealing different physical laws and constants governing them. This goes beyond just the realms of astrophysics. It resonates with the fascination people have for parallel worlds. Furthermore, the presence of traversable wormholes within black holes challenge our comprehension of time and causality. It raises the exciting possibility of not only traveling through space, but also moving through time itself, enabling journeys to the past or the future. Neil isn't the only one exploring the idea of time travel in connection with black holes. There are numerous theories suggesting that black holes could potentially serve as natural time machines. One captivating aspect of this concept is the phenomenon of time dilation where the passage of time is profoundly affected by the immense gravitational pull of a black hole. In the vicinity of a black hole, time can be dramatically stretched or compressed, causing significant differences in the rate at which time passes compared to observers farther away. For example, spending just a year near a black hole could be equivalent to experiencing several decades or even centuries on Earth. This time dilation effect raises the intriguing possibility of time travel facilitated by black holes, as entering their intense gravitational field might transport an individual into a different temporal reference frame. The profound curvature of space-time created by black holes leads to fascinating theoretical scenarios. It's conceivable that space and time become so profoundly distorted near a black hole that they loop back onto themselves, forming what's known as a closed time-like curve. This concept suggests the existence of a time loop where one could theoretically traverse a path leading back to their own past. However, this type of time travel poses unique challenges and uncertainties. It's one of the most enigmatic forms of time travel, where the boundaries between the beginning and the end remain unclear. It's crucial to emphasize that venturing beyond the event horizon, the point of no return surrounding a black hole, carries severe consequences. The gravitational pull near the event horizon creates an increasingly steep gravitational potential, making it extraordinarily difficult to escape the black hole's gravitational grasp. It is theorized that the immense forces involved would likely result in extreme gravitational tidal forces, tearing apart anything that ventures too close. Even the black holes within our galaxy possess such immense power. Now, let's break down what all of this means for Earth. Could our planet be unexpectedly devoured by a black hole? Well, the answer isn't straightforward. Black holes are incredibly dense with an immensely strong gravitational pull. While there are supermassive black holes scattered across our Milky Way galaxy, the likelihood of Earth directly falling into one is exceedingly low, at least for the foreseeable future. For Earth to be in significant danger, our own Sun would need to collapse into a black hole with a comparable mass. Even in such a scenario, it wouldn't pose a threat to our planet. 
The closest known black hole to Earth, V616 Monos Sirotis, is still quite distant, and approximately 6.6 .6 times more massive than our Sun. Earth would need to approach it within about 800,000 kilometers to be torn apart by its gravitational forces. Such an event is highly improbable in our lifetime, making it more of a theoretical consideration. A more remote concern arises from the potential collision of our galaxy with another. In this hypothetical scenario, gravitational interactions could push Earth toward the center of the galaxy, where a supermassive black hole resides. But there's no need to be alarmed. This collision isn't projected to happen for another 4 billion years, offering ample time for the natural evolution and fate of our planet to unfold. In the unlikely event that Earth did approach the event horizon of a black hole, the side of our planet closer to the black hole would experience significantly stronger gravitational forces than the far side. These tidal forces would ultimately lead to the total destruction of our planet. However, from the perspective of those on Earth, the experience within the black hole's event horizon would initially appear unchanged, at least for a brief period. It's essential to grasp that the likelihood of Earth directly encountering a black hole is exceedingly small. Even our galaxy's supermassive black hole, which is already millions of times more massive than the Sun, doesn't pose an immediate threat. Stars close to the black hole have likely already been consumed, while those farther away remain relatively safe from its gravitational influence. So, for now, Earth can be considered safe from such cosmic encounters.